All right, so I loved that you made this film global. Thank you. That was so fun Thank to you. travel Europe, London with the Muppets. <laughs> How did you come up with the premise? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it really was a question for Nick and I that what happens next? Like they were together again, they had the theater back and it was literally the thing we thought immediately, well, let's just carry the story on because that's such a fun idea that the, the sequel starts seconds after the last movie ended. And once you kind of got the family back together again, it was a question of like, what do they do? And obviously a world tour is a very easy kind of like, let's go and show the world what we do these days because they had kind of forgotten about us last time. And I thought that was a good chance to kind of show the Muppet show to a degree. But at the same time, you could also have this kind of caperish plot about I always make a film about a big diamond. I love mm -hmm. those kind of old movies like, you know, Casino, you know, uh, um, you know, the Pink Panther and those kind of right. movies. And so I really felt that it would be fun to combine those two elements and have a kind of world tour which gets taken over by a bad guy. And then, of course, we had the idea, well, what if the bad guy looks a lot like Kermit and the Muppets don't realise Kermit has been taken away and Constantine's come in his place. And it all kind of fell in place like that, really. And then his very loyal number two with Ricky Gervais. Yes, the long-suffering number two. Well, that's the other thing is that I've always enjoyed having... Uh, comedy bad guys and it's a very Muppety kind of trope and it's been the Muppet movies for a long time and so I thought if we had this kind of number one evil frog guy it'd be funny if there's a number two guy who basically wants his job he wants to be number one he has great one upmanship and having worked with Ricky before I just knew he'd be fantastic for that kind of role whereby he's this subordinate but he hates being that and wants to be the number one and has a kind of repartee with this evil frog and Matt and Ricky get on so well it's fantastic yes I just spoke with them right. and it's, st it's living it's yes. still he's yes. like I'm number one in yes. real life but number no, no, yeah, yeah, on and off camera, there's a, there's a rivalry there, which is really fun, that's true. I absolutely loved it. So now you mentioned the 60s caper style. Mm -hmm. That actually came to life in Ty Burrell's character. Yes, very much. He was that character. He was, down from his incredibly neat hair to his pencil <laughs> moustache. But again, it's that kind of, he's an amalgam of every single French French kind of TV detective of all time. You know, he's, yeah. he's Clouseau, he's Poirot, he's, he's the most root one French person possible. Because if you have Sam, who is this incredibly American guy, then the absolute worst person to partner with him would be a completely French guy. And so that's a great kind of combination of characters there. And it's Perfect. one of those comedy engines I love. And they really loved each other throughout. They do. And it's that <laughs> thing whereby, you know, you realize when you work together, that sometimes your differences aren't so great. And yes. they do get on very well. They're very sad to say goodbye at the end. So, you know, it's just a fun premise but it works itself out. Absolutely. So 1955 Jim Henson brought us these amazing <coughs> characters yes, very much. and they're just as relevant today. What do Thank you, you think it is about them that we love so much? Well you know what I just think for me it's always been about the idea that they are the absolute classic underdogs. Individually they kind of fail. They're not very good at what they do. Like Gonzo is a terrible stunt man. Fuzzy can't tell jokes, but somehow together they work really nicely. And I think that's that very simple message that we can achieve a lot of good if we all come together. That's a very universal message in 1955 or today. And I think that if you try and combine that kind of heart with a kind of contemporary comedy sense that hopefully that Nick and I bring to the, the, the party, so to speak, then you can get something very interesting. And I think that's why people hopefully today still like it. So we went global. Where's next for the Muppets? <laughs> Into space. Oh, no, done that. Um, uh, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I, I love the idea of coming back to the States somehow. But again, it's one of those things that having just finished this one, the last thing I'm going to do is think about the next one. I mean, last time we did, this is how it happened. But who knows? The, there's, there's got, the possibilities are now endless, I think, for them. Yes. And we want more. I'll tell you that right thank now. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so My much. Absolute we pleasure. can't wait to have it on our screens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.